Tuesday, August 15, 2023. Few people today read the Institutes of the Christian Religion by John Calvin. If they did, then they would know that Calvin taught that those individuals who believe they are receiving special messages from God, those who believe in the continuation of the apostolic gifts, what is called continuationism or charismatic theology, Those people are actually being punished by God for despising the Bible, for rejecting Sola Scriptura. John Calvin, responding to the continuationists of his day, who rejected Sola Scriptura, writes the following, and I quote, But their caviling objection that we depend on the letter that killeth shows that they have not escaped the punishment due to the despisers of Scripture, end quote. Institutes 193. I'm using the John Allen translation, which is the best translation. John Calvin was right. The Bible alone is the Word of God. Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. John Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion was written to oppose Roman Catholicism and its medieval Holy Inquisition, which kidnapped, tortured, and murdered anyone who dare oppose the Pope's authority. In Calvin's letter to the King of France, which the Reformer deliberately used to introduce all four editions of the Institutes of the Christian Religion, which Calvin himself admits is an important and complete work of apologetics in itself, an introduction which mercilessly attacks and refutes popes, the Church Fathers, the self-contradicting scholastics, the nowhere-to-be-found-in-the-Bible host of monks, as well as other medieval and dark age superstitions and human traditions. The man who is said to be Martin Luther's greatest student makes a stunning turn in his appended syllabus and ends his prologue by summarizing his subsequent 1,000 pages of theology with the following, and I quote, Man, created originally upright, being afterwards ruined, not partially, but totally, finds salvation out of himself, holy in Christ, to whom being united by the Holy Spirit freely bestowed, without any regard of future works, he enjoys in him a twofold benefit, the perfect imputation of righteousness which attends him to the grave, and the commencement of sanctification which he daily increases, till at length he completes it at the day of regeneration or resurrection of the body, so that in eternal life and the heavenly inheritance, his praises are celebrated for such stupendous mercy. End quote. Institute's General Syllabus, Section 4, the John Allen Translation. Calvin's summary emphasizes salvation by grace alone and justification by faith alone, apart from any of our works, focusing on the imputed righteousness of Christ alone, that saving righteousness that is outside of us, not in us, that is freely credited to our accounts and received by faith alone, a faith that is itself the free gift of God. John Calvin was right, and Roman Catholicism is wrong. Calvin's summary can itself be best summarized with the following verse. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 3.28 Thursday, August 17, 2023 John Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion was a wrecking ball that pulverized the medieval Roman Catholic theology of his day. Calvin did theology with a hammer, God's hammer, and by that I mean Scripture alone. Calvin's doctrine on truth and how men come to know it, the study of epistemology, also shocked the people of his day. But it offends even more people today. Calvin taught that, Apart from the special revelation found in the Bible alone, men cannot know truth. Outside of faith in Scripture alone, men can only think in terms of subjective opinions, ambivalent conjectures, and uncertain guesses. This means, according to John Calvin, that modern empirical science may be useful, but it can never be true. John Calvin writes, and I quote, Men, who are taught only by nature, have no certain, sound, or distinct knowledge, but are confined to confused principles, end quote. Institutes, 1.5.12. I'm using the John Allen translation. 
The epistemic implications are devastating to modern empirical science. For since the claims of modern science are not logically deduced from scripture alone, it follows necessarily that they are always wrong. Jesus says, and I quote, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. End quote. Matthew 22, verse 29. True judgments are not to be made based on our senses, but on scripture alone. Jesus says, and I quote, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. End quote. John chapter 7, verse 24. Quote, Thy word is truth. End quote. John 17, verse 17. John Calvin was correct for rejecting Thomas Aquinas' Dark Age empiricism, as well as today's idiotic scientism. Calvin knew, and now you know too, that the Bible alone has the monopoly on truth in this life, and it answers all of life's difficult questions. Friday, August 18th, 2023. Apart from some amazing circumstance, there is no such thing as a Calvinist that cannot read. Calvinists read. That's what we do. Erudition is the Calvinist condition. Calvinism ended the illiterate Roman Catholic Dark Ages, illuminating Europe by teaching the common man to read the Bible for himself. Calvinists print books and build libraries, while Papists forbid books and burn libraries. The reading and preaching of the Bible is the primary means of grace. So the ability to read well, to have excellent grammar, and to think logically is indispensable for each believer in Reformed theology. Scripture requires us to check all preaching against the Bible alone. See Acts chapter 17 verse 11. Calvin taught the priesthood of all believers, which asserts that rigorous Bible reading and study is essential for the Christian life. Calvin writes, and I quote, Hence we readily understand that it is incumbent on us diligently to read and attend to the Scripture. End quote. Institutes 192, the John Allen translation. Calvin is telling us that it is our necessary duty to diligently read the Bible. This means you need to have your own Bible. You need to know it inside out. This is the antidote for the poison of popery and priestcraft. Men are not to depend upon some sinful priest to tell them what the Bible means. The Bible alone is the infallible interpreter of Holy Scripture, not the church, not tradition, and not the confessions. That Presbyterians agreed with Calvin's teaching on Sola Scriptura is clear from the following, and I quote, Beside public reading of the Holy Scriptures, every person that can read is to be exhorted to read the Scriptures privately. And all others that cannot read, if not disabled by age or otherwise, are likewise to be exhorted to learn to read and to have a Bible, end quote. The Westminster Directory of Public Worship of Public Reading of the Holy Scriptures. That our society today is greatly ignorant of the Bible and generally illiterate shows how Roman Catholicism and atheism have overwhelmed the United States of America. John Calvin was right, for he was merely echoing Holy Scripture, which is God speaking to us. Quote, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read, No one of these shall fail. End quote. Isaiah chapter 34 Verse 16. Saturday, August 19, 2023. Ideas have consequences. Calvin's epistemic teaching that the Bible alone has the monopoly on truth for us in this life rules out the claims of empirical science as well as other religions and philosophies. Using scripture alone, Calvin comes to the conclusion that creation is not billions of years old. Calvin writes, and I quote, The first thing specified in the history is the time, that by a continued series of years the faithful might arrive at the first original of the human race and all things, the continuance of the world, now advancing to its last end, has not yet reached 6,000 years, end quote. Institutes 
1, I'm using the John Allen translation. Today's popular theologians such as Wayne Grudem, who claim to be Calvinists, but interpret the Bible in light of modern scientific conjectures, have departed from sola scriptura and shown themselves not to be Calvinists. Calvin uses scripture alone, see Exodus chapter 20 verses 9 through 11, to establish the literal six-day creation. Calvin writes, and I quote, To the same purpose is the narration of Moses, that the work of God was completed not in one moment, but in six days, end quote. Institutes 114.2. Again, I'm using the John Allen translation. Monday, August 21st, 2023. Rejecting the irrational Dark Age mysticism of medieval scholasticism and the so-called Church Fathers, John Calvin boldly taught that knowledge of the Bible and of God as both Creator and Redeemer was necessary for salvation. Mysticism heretically claims that God cannot be known, braying such self-contradicting nonsense as To name God is not to name Him, and to know God is not to know Him. Following Scripture alone, however, John Calvin reprobated such absurdities, saying the following, and I quote, For, to pass from death to life, they must have known God, not only as the Creator, but also as the Redeemer, as they certainly obtained both from His Word. For that species of knowledge, which related to him as the creator and governor of the world, in order, preceded the other. To this was afterwards added the other internal knowledge, which alone vivifies dead souls and apprehends God, not only as the creator of the world and as the sole author and arbiter of all events, but also as the redeemer in the person of the mediator." Institutes of the Christian Religion, 161. I'm using the John Allen translation. Now Calvin is echoing scripture and scripture alone, which testifies that God can be known and that the knowledge of the Bible is necessary for salvation. Consider the following three verses, quote, That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth, end quote. Psalm 83, verse 18, quote, By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, end quote. Isaiah 53, verse 10, quote, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, end quote. John 17, verse 3. Did you notice that Calvin, as he was teaching the primacy of the intellect, also asserted that God is the author and governor of whatsoever comes to pass, both good and evil. Already at this early point in the Institutes, we see that Calvin is teaching the Bible's doctrine of God's absolute predestination of all things. Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023. Sinful nature, which is at war with God, rejects the Bible's teaching that God is the absolute determiner, creator, and controller of all things. The unconverted cannot stand the idea that God is the potter, while they are the clay. God fitting one vessel unto glory and another unto destruction, making one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Despite the pusillanimous tendencies of some ministers on this subject, John Calvin boldly presents the full counsel of God's Word, which precludes the myth of human free will. Whatever God causes to happen in time by His providence is an exact copy of the Lord's eternal and omnipotent purposes. Responding to those who reject God's providential reign of creation for the myth of man's free will, John Calvin writes the following, and I quote, But these cavils, or rather extravagancies of frenzy, will easily be dispelled by the pious and holy contemplation of providence, which the rule of piety dictates to us, so that we may derive from it the greatest pleasure and advantage. The mind of a Christian, therefore, when it is certainly persuaded that all things happen by the ordination of God 
and that there is nothing fortuitously contingent, will always direct its views to him as the supreme cause of all things, and will also consider inferior causes in their proper order. He will not doubt that the particular providence of God is watchful for his preservation, never permitting any event which it will not overrule for his advantage and safety. But, since he is concerned in the first place with men, and in the next place with the other creatures, he will assure himself, as to both, that the providence of God reigns over all, with respect to men, whether good or evil. He will acknowledge that their deliberations, wills, endeavors, and powers are under his control, so that it is at his option to direct them whithersoever he pleases, and to restrain them as often as he pleases. The vigilance of the particular providence of God for the safety of the faithful is attested by numerous and very remarkable promises. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalm chapter 55 verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm chapter 91 verse 1. He that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. Though a woman forget her sucking child, yet will I not forget thee. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 1 and chapter 49 verse 15. End quote. Institutes 1, 17, 6. I'm using the John Allen translation. Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. One of the things that astonished those reading the Institutes of the Christian Religion in the 1500s was John Calvin's demonstration from Scripture alone that God's absolute predestination of all things could not be divorced from the Gospel's teaching that all of our salvation is by God's sovereign grace alone. Calvin showed that justification by faith alone was not a new teaching, but an echo from the Christian past that the papist dark ages had failed to stifle. God's invincible predestination and irresistible providence found the elect and converted them one by one throughout the ages, despite massive satanic opposition, and all the while showing that because God determines all things, all of our salvation from start to finish is monergistic, that is, the work of God alone due to Jehovah's unmerited favor. For grace is an attribute of God, which opposes the papist myths of synergism and human free will. Calvin testifies that both justification and sanctification are the works of God alone. He writes, and I quote, Our justification is His work. From Him proceed power, sanctification, truth, grace, and every other blessing we can conceive. Since there is but one Spirit, from whom every kind of gifts descends, end quote. Institutes 1, 13, 14. I'm using the John Allen translation. Thursday, August 24th, 2023. Roman Catholicism is a system of heresy that utilizes a variety of human traditions to remove the Bible from the people and replace scripture with idolatrous images, trinkets, charms, crosses, crucifixes, and so on. Jesus forbids such human traditions in worship, quote, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, end quote. Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. Jesus also says, quote, true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, end quote. John chapter 4, verse 23. Since truth comes from Scripture alone, it necessarily follows that our method of worship must be regulated by the Bible alone. Where are we told to make crosses, crucifixes, images of Jesus in the Bible? Such papist superstitions have been blasphemously added to Scripture. Reformed church buildings do not contain such papist paraphernalia. Reformed ministers do not wear such papist jewelry. For our focus is on Scripture alone, 
the primacy of reading the Bible and preaching the scriptures, not trinkets and images. So it's not surprising to see all the Lordship Salvation preachers, like James White, teaching their heresy of justification by faith and works, while also wearing crosses, crucifixes, or standing in front of crosses or behind pulpits that have large crosses on them. Calvinist preachers teach justification by belief alone, in the gospel alone, and they do it without crosses, crucifixes, rosaries, or pictures of Jesus. John Calvin writes the following, and I quote, Paul testifies that in the true preaching of this gospel, Christ is evidently set forth, and, as it were, crucified before our eyes. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. To what purpose, then, was the erection of so many crosses of wood and stone, silver and gold, everywhere in the temples, if it had been fully and faithfully inculcated, that Christ died, that he might bear our curse on the cross, expiate our sins by the sacrifice of his body, cleanse us by his blood, and in a word, reconcile us to God the Father. From this simple declaration, they might learn more than from a thousand crosses of wood or stone. For perhaps the avaricious fixed their minds and their ear and their eyes more tenaciously on the gold and silver crosses than on any part of the divine word. In quote, Institutes 111, 7. I'm using the John Allen translation. So Calvin slaps Antichrist in the face and reminds us all that instead of wasting their time making pointless papist paraphernalia, people should have been given their own Bibles and thoroughly taught to read them in the Dark Ages, carefully for themselves. The Bible says, and I quote, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. End quote. Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 5. Friday, August 25th, 2023. The Bible is logically consistent. It is infallible and does not contradict itself. Scripture has no mistakes, for it is entirely true. Any mystery found in the Bible is explained by Scripture. The unbeliever's mind is darkened, and the Bible is foolishness to him. Those who reject the gospel find the Bible to be a book filled with inscrutable mysteries, irreconcilable paradoxes, antinomies, or, in simple language, logical contradictions. Infidels reject law gospel distinction and justification by faith alone. Because God is omniscient and omnipotent, because God is logically consistent and cannot lie, it is not difficult for Jehovah to offer the inspired Bible to preserve it and to reveal it to his elect. Christians, justified and regenerated by God, accept the Bible alone to be the inspired, authoritative, infallible, true, logically consistent, and clear Word of God. Christians accept law gospel distinction, the doctrine of justification by faith alone, and find the Bible to be our only source of doctrine. John Calvin, affirming the verbal plenary inspiration of the Bible and law gospel distinction, writes the following about God and His Word, and I quote, He is the author of the Scriptures. He cannot be mutable and inconsistent with Himself, end quote, Institutes 1, 9, 2. I'm using the John Allen translation. Calvin also says, quote, It is true that the law and the gospel contain mysteries which far transcend our capacities. But since God illuminates the minds of his people with the spirit of understanding to apprehend these mysteries which he has condescended to reveal in his word, there we have now no abyss, but a way in which we may safely walk, and a lamp for the direction of our feet, the light of life, and the school of certain and evident truth, end quote. Institutes 117.2. Today, men have emerged, some even claiming to be Calvinists, who blasphemously say that all the Bible's doctrines are self-contradictions and unsolvable mysteries, or that its major doctrines are self-contradicting. Men like John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, Douglas Wilson, Cornelius Van Til, Greg Bonson, John Frame, Wayne Grudem, Louis Burkhoff, Herman Bavink, and so on. As we can see from the quotes taken from John Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion above, the men enumerated above, the mystics, who think the Bible is self-contradicting, do not agree with John Calvin.